Hello and welcome to another tutorial. This time we're going to be talking about superscripts and subscripts. Now, what do we mean by those? Well, if you take this example here, we're actually in text edit. And here we've got H2O, which is obviously the chemical symbol uh, for water. But it's slightly wrong because we all know that this two should be a lot smaller and it should be lower. So in text edit, what I can do is I can go up and go format, font, go down here and we go baseline, subscript. And yes, it, it probably needs changing font size, but that's now correct. And the same goes for this, pi r squared, which is the formula for the surface area of a circle, I think, if I can go back to my O-level maths. And obviously the square is in the wrong position, so exactly the same. Select it, go up, format, font, baseline, and superscript. Again, you're probably going to want to change the size of that as well. Um, now that is great in text edit, but when you come to Final Cut Pro 10, you're going to notice a slight problem. So if we go on to Final Cut Pro 10, and I have already a title here. Let's blow that up a bit. And we've got a picture of a pie on some water, which I thought was quite clever, but probably nobody else does. Now, we need to do the same here. We need to do a subscript and a superscript. But you'll notice that if we go up to this menu, there is no font item in any of those menus. So you've actually got to do it all over here. Now this is actually uh, one of our Industrial Revolution's plugins. Let me just show you. It is one from our XFX glass panels. This technique is for any title. And if you are building a plugin, make sure if you've got a lot of text, make sure you use a text um, uh, text template from Motion rather than a generator. Because what you do is you end up having access to all of this. So this is the text inspector um, within Final Cut Pro 10. Now, there are a couple of ways of doing this. Um, it gets more interesting as you look at it, but they all kind of like start off the same. So I'm going to make this H2O into water. So what I need to do is click on the viewer and actually select the two. Now, what I can do is then go to the baseline and drop that down. And we're probably going to drop the size down as well to make that correct. Now that's looking a, a lot more like uh, the formula as you expect to read it. Just let me undo that. I'm going to show you another method as well. You can actually go up and go into the emojis and symbols and tap in subscript. And it will bring you a load of these. But we want the two and it will drop that down. Maybe a bit small, so you need to bring that up, but that's two ways of doing it. But I kind of quite like doing it with the baseline. So let me do this one as well. So that's pi r squared, and I'm going to push the baseline up and then drop the size down to give that a much better look on there. And as you can see, I think I prefer this. I mean, this needs kerning as well, doesn't it? You never leave that like that. You'd kern the O up there and possibly to the H as well. One of these things you'd have to play with, I mean the size of that, I think the size of that is wrong. Let me go bring that up. I'd still adjust the baseline of that, you see? That's why I quite like having everything adjustable because what might be uh, correct when it comes to clicking on something sometimes isn't correct when you look at it, hence that's why I'm going to move the kerning for that. The dreaded kerning, the curse of all motion graphics designers. So there you go, there's a text problem solved, I hope you enjoyed it. As we always say, please like, subscribe, ring the bell and you'll keep up to date with everything. We've got a lot of tutorials coming and hope to see you on the next one, bye bye.